Hey guys, it's the Psych MP, and today I'm going to be talking about prescribing antidepressants, specifically SSRIs. You know, why am I prescribing this? What are the indications? What are the side effects? Is there one SSRI better than the other? And which one do I prescribe the most? Let's get to it. So first things first, what am I looking for in an SSRI? The first thing is, what symptoms am I targeting? Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Irritability? And what side effects am I trying to avoid? And what side effects can we use to our advantage to help the patient? You know, what if it makes them really sedated or tired? Then we can move it to bedtime. Maybe we can help with their sleep. You know, kill two birds with one stone. Um, what about family history? Uh, you know, if a medication works for their family, their dad or their brother and sister, there's a high chance it will help them as well. Um, so you know, kind of use that to your advantage. Um, you know, all these medications generally take about four to six weeks to take full effect. Um, and with that, you know, in two weeks, people definitely notice a difference, good or bad. Uh, so I would tell them to kind of just wait out. Uh, but that's kind of the basics with the SSRIs. So the first SSRI I'm going to talk about is Prozac, uh, also known as fluoxetine. So fluoxetine is the number one most activating SSRI, meaning that it has increased activation, increased jitteriness for a lot of my patients, uh, and in turn can increase anxiety. Uh, this medication, what I would prescribe it for is someone that doesn't want to get out of bed, that doesn't have the energy, uh, that doesn't feel that motivation. You know, these medications, a lot of times we can use to, to empower these people to kind of, you know, want to do things again. You know, Prozac, again, has the longest half-life out of any of the SSRIs, about two weeks. So with this, uh, if a patient is forgetting medications or they're forgetful, well, this would be a good choice because if, even if they didn't take it for a couple of days, it wouldn't really matter. The other thing is, let's say a patient didn't like the medication and you wanted, wanted to get them off of it. You'd have to wait about two weeks before switching. So there's always good and bad things with each medication. You know, this medication for me is not my first choice, especially if it's for anxiety. Uh, anxiety is probably going to be more on the bottom of the list in terms of the SSRIs. I really would prefer Alexapro or Zoloft over this. But for some people, Prozac can really help them with the, with the depression, with the anxiety. It gives them some energy, can help with the irritability. Prozac is, is, a, is a good drug uh, when it works. But again, with all these SSRIs, it doesn't really matter because everyone responds differently to medication. You might have one patient that might say Prozac was the best medication they ever had. It helped them out so much. You'll ask the other person, they think it was the worst drug ever created. So there is no best SSRI. There is no best antidepressant. You know, it just depends on how they respond to the medication. Okay, guys, so let's talk about sertraline, also known as Zoloft. So to me, sertraline is almost like the jack of all trades. It is the second most activating antidepressant. So for some people, it can cause an increased jitteriness, increased activation, but not to that same extent generally as Prozac. It doesn't have as long of a half-life, generally the same as the other antidepressants in the SSRI drug class, 27 to 32 hours on average uh, for the half-life. And with sertraline, it can be good for depression, it can be good for anxiety, it can be good for irritability. Uh, let's say you have a patient again that maybe doesn't want to get out of bed, that doesn't have the energy. Maybe Sertraline might be a better choice than Prozac, only because if you don't like Prozac, Prozac will be in your system for two weeks. Sertraline again is similar to the other drug classes where it only lasts 27 to 32 hours, at least in terms of half-life. So Zoloft has its indications. It can be a good drug. Some people call it Squirtraline uh, because it's safe in breastfeeding. Uh, Zoloft is, you know, again, the second most activating uh, has indications and similar to similar to Prozac. Some people love it, some people hate it. I have definitely seen a lot of GI side effects with Proz uh, with Sertraline versus some of the other ones, but that could just be from my practice. You know, I have a small sample size. So the third medication I'm going to be talking about today is Lexapro or Escitalopram. I'm not going to be talking about Celexa uh, or Citalopram just because Escitalopram was created as a better version. It's the active S isomer of uh, Citalopram. So. Lexapro is probably my go-to medication uh, for depression and anxiety. Generally, in my, in my practice, I really like escitalopram. I feel like it, it's very well tolerated, and that's a big deal with, the, with your patients because let's say you know, it does take that four to six weeks to fully take effect or you know, two weeks to maybe notice a little bit of a difference. If someone's feeling a lot of side effects, generally they're not going to want to be on a medication that causes a lot of side effects and they're not noticing much of a difference. Escitalopram to me, it doesn't cause as much of that jitteriness, that activation feeling, that restlessness that Prozac and Zoloft can. Uh, with, with Lexapro, you know, there's some other things, you know, increased QT prolongation can happen. 
um, less. Uh, it's not as bad as the QT prolongation from citalopram. Uh, citalopram for me is the the, my, the the best SSRI in my opinion, in my in my practice, in terms of for depression and anxiety, especially if someone's never been on any medications. They're telling me they're really anxious, you know, really depressed. Then acetalopram is probably going to be my first choice, uh, and depending on how they respond to it, uh, then I'll maybe switch into something different if they need to. But with acetalopram, generally well tolerated. The half life is about 27 to 32 hours, and you know most common side effects: stomach upset, nausea, especially for those first couple weeks. Like all these other SSRIs, because again, 90% of serotonin is built in your stomach, 10% is in your brain. So a lot of times, in that increase in serotonin is going to cause those GI upset, those GI side effects. So, Lexapro guys, escitalopram, probably my favorite one, uh, but for me, that's in my practice. And I, I would definitely say that in terms of efficacy, I would probably say it's, it's to me, is the best SSRI. Uh, but that's just in my opinion. I know that I say there's no best antidepressant, but I, I'm a little biased. Okay, so the fourth antidepressant I'm going to be talking about, and the last one, is paroxetine. I'm not going to be talking about fluvoxamine just because I've never prescribed it. Um, but yeah, paroxetine, also known as Paxil, it has the fastest half-life. So the opposite of Prozac or fluoxetine. Fluoxetine, two weeks half-life. Paxil is much faster. So a lot of people also complain about the withdrawals of when you get off of Paxil because it has such a fast half-life. So people will get really bad withdrawals getting off of this. Uh, it is probably the most sedating uh, SSRI compared to fluoxetine, um, Lexapro, and sertraline. So a lot of times I've also noticed that the drugs that have the least amount of activation, like Lexapro or acetalopram and paroxetine, are going to be a little bit better generally for anxiety. Um, so if I do have someone that uh, is, you know, has a lot of anxiety, acetalopram or paroxetine will probably be one of my first choices. The thing is. Paroxetine has a lot of side effects, especially in terms of sedation and weight gain and sexual side effects. I would say more so than the other three. So with paroxetine, if, you know, if someone is not sleeping well at, bed, at bedtime, then paroxetine might be a good choice to move it to bedtime, help them sleep because um, it's sedating and hopefully that helps with their anxiety and, and, and the depression. Uh, but the weight gain, the side effects, there are some side effects with paroxetine. But again, paroxetine again is going to be one of the better choices for anxiety fastest half-life so you have to you know be wary about that but that is paroxetine just a message to everyone i hope everyone is doing really good i know guys i i suck with posting videos and the content but like i said you know the private practice that i started it, it's really grown uh, but i have some more days off i'm trying to you know get back into youtube trying to get more video videos for you guys i'm on tiktok at the psych np don't really post too much there but you know i i missed youtube i took this little break a couple months but I'm energized again, so I'm going to have some more videos hopefully soon for you guys. And I hope everyone's doing really well. I hope you guys had a happy holidays, and I hope you guys have a happy New Year's. The second P. Out.